We've had a lot of activity in and around New Zealand. 6.6 .6 deep earthquake in between Fiji and Samoa at the very top of the Kermadec Trench in Tonga, where you get deep earthquakes like that. Uh, this area specifically is super well noted for some of the deepest earthquakes on the planet, with the Pacific plates going directly vertical there. And then we have New Zealand here. Down below, we have our 6.3. This was on the 7th of July, the first magnitude 6 plus earthquake in July, right there, 6.3. And then if you go further south, we'll see all the other earthquakes that have occurred further south in New Zealand. 6.2 on the 25th of July. And then we had 6.2 on the 26th of July. And now we've just had this 6.9 today falling up in nearly the same location as that 6.2. So this part of the subduction zone has slipped. And we've also had this part here slip as well. We've had part of the Kermadec Trench at the very top slip. And there has been earthquake activity along this over the past few months. And there, there has been also activity in this zone as well over the past few months, that's notable. But if we're talking just about July, this is what we're looking at. And also, if you did not know, the Alpine Fault in New Zealand has a very precise recurrence interval of about 300 years. Based on the geologic data where they collected a whole bunch of sediments from these sort of alpine lakes, and they track those earthquake layers that are formed because if you have sediment coming down, it forms nice layers. When there's an earthquake, it makes it all sloshy. So you can identify these different earthquake zones. They've collected out across a variety of lakes along this entire stretch. And so they can match up those layers. And then they can also do radiocarbon dating with like little leaf fragments and stuff embedded within the mud. So they have really good data for the Alpine Fault in terms of its recurrence interval and the, the overall magnitude it can do. It's almost exactly on the money 300 years consistently. There's very, there's very little variability. It's, it's actually surprising. Most faults show a bit more variability in that, and you'll still create an average reoccurrence interval. But the Alpine Fault is like clockwork 300 years. The earthquake magnitude it can reach is magnitude 8, or maybe, you know, right around there, like 8.1, 8.2 perhaps. Like we, we don't know the upper limit, but we know it can reach magnitude 8 earthquakes. The research team that examined this, based off of the data they collected, also some really advanced modeling, suggests that there's like a like an 80% chance of there being a magnitude 8 earthquake on the Alpine Fault in the next 30 years, something like that. And so we are right now at that recurrence interval because the last big earthquake on the Alpine Fault was 1717. So this area has been... Uh, loaded up with a lot of energy over the past few months. We're seeing slip along both sides, but the Alpine Fault itself has not slipped. So I just want to show you one more interesting thing. This is simply just an idea. I think it's very interesting. I'm not saying this is 100% the case. So we're just looking at patterns, putting them together. So we're going to add in Dwarf Planet Maki Maki and also Haumea. They travel together. But we see our solar system here. So here's the inner planets. And then we zoom out. And this blue line there is Neptune. I'm not showing the, I would have to add Pluto if I wanted to do that. Um, we see that Haumeu and Maki Maki have these highly inclined orbits relative to the ecliptic plane. And they kind of hang out together because Haumea has a orbital period of 283 years for Haumea and 306 years for Maki Maki. Oh wait, didn't you say that the Alpine Fault in New Zealand has a recurrence interval of 300 years? Oh, that's right, I did. Again, not saying this is the case, but if we go back in time, check this out. We're gonna go back to 1717. We're gonna go back to that last historic earthquake for the Alpine Fault in New Zealand. And we're just going to think about geometry, okay? Think about angles and geometry and alignments. Here is 1717. I don't think they know the, the day or the month of that earthquake. Maybe they know the month, but they know it occurred in 1717, this big magnitude A plus earthquake on the Alpine Fault in New Zealand. Look at Haumea and Maki Maki. They're right next to each other. And so you have to consider the fact that electromagnetic fields and also gravitational fields decline with an inverse square law. So if you double the distance, the field strength goes down by four. And so that means that the gravitational field of the sun is very strong by the sun. But as you start to go out into 
the hyperbelt region and beyond the orbit of Neptune, the dominant gravity vector for this location right here would be Maki Maki and Haumea combined. Because they're very close together here in 1717, as we can see. Just through their normal orbital period, they got very close together and created a strong gravity vector at this location. And so now you have, if you consider this, now you have this gravity vector that's strengthened over normal, slicing down to the sun and to the ecliptic plane, okay? And Maki Maki again, it's 306 years for its orbital revolution. Well, the orbital inclination of these two is nearly the same as well, as you can tell. This angle here to the ecliptic plane, Maki Maki is 29 degrees, Haumea is 28 degrees. So 29, 28 degrees. Let's just say 28 degrees for the two of them, okay? They both have an orbital inclination right around 28 degrees. This is an example of how planetary resonances perhaps interact with the Earth in terms of earthquakes and things. How that can be significant even from these distant bodies like dwarf planets. Here again is New Zealand, okay? Well, if you'll recall, the Earth is tilted on its rotational axis. It's 23.5 degrees. And it changes very slightly, but basically it's 24 degrees. Let's round up. 24 degrees, right? It's not uh, spinning exactly vertical. It's tilted 24 degrees. When it is solstice, you have the tilt angle of the Earth really tilted either towards it or like that, right? And then during equinox, it's perpendicular. But we have this natural tilt angle to the Earth of about 24 degrees. Here, if we go to New Zealand, this section of the Alpine Fault is vertical. It's going straight down, absolutely straight down. Back in 1717, during the winter, like winter solstice, or that'd be December, you're going to have the southern hemisphere of the Earth tilted like this, right? And it's going to be tilted more towards the sun. And now this vertical fault is going to be inclined 23 to 24 degrees relative to the ecliptic plane. Then you have Haumea and Maki Maki basically exactly also along that plane because they're at 28 degrees on average with their orbital inclination. So you get a very precise alignment with the, the gravitational plane going from Maki Maki and Haumea down through this specific fault. And maybe this is actually inclined five degrees or something. That can make up the difference. Like, you know, we know it's close to vertical. So it's right in that zone. We saw with 1717, a big rupture here as Haumea and Makimaki are really close together and exactly at the apex of their orbits. I think that's highly compelling. And beyond that, the recurrence interval for the Alpine Fault is 300 years approximately, which is the same as the orbital revolution Makimaki Add in Haumea, 283, right? You get that average. It's right around that recurrence interval. So not saying that these two dwarf planets are controlling all the earthquakes on the Alpine Fault in New Zealand. Nine saying that they are causing it, but it's a potential that's definitely interesting and worth exploring because the, the main way to kind of make these connections is to look at the, the frequency of something. And also the geometry. So they have the same geometry. They have the same yearly frequency, that period length of 300 years. They all line up. But if we go forward to today, we will see that though Maki Maki and Haumea are not exactly the same position, it is similar. It is very, very similar. They're pretty close together and they are near the top of their orbit. So let's go to 2025 and the Alpine Fault. It's been more than 300 years now since this last rupture. So that was 1717. It's again, 2025. So it's been more than 300 years. So here we see them right there. And so they are not as close together as they were in 1717, but they are still pretty close together. And actually they're forming a nice, they're right on the plane together at this moment in time. See how they're basically right along the same plane. So there are very similar conditions now with these dwarf planets as there was back with the last magnitude 8 rupture of the Alpine Fault in New Zealand. And we are seeing a lot of earthquake activity around New Zealand. We haven't had a big rupture on this and it's overdue at its reoccurrence interval.